Hello and welcome to Mofo RC Garage. Today we are going to be talking about the new oil shocks. Uh, this will also pertain to the old oil shocks. If you happen to be uh, putting together a set of those ones versus these ones, the new ones are a 42 millimeter long shock. I uh, can't remember the exact travel amount. It's probably going to be on the website. I think it's around 13 to maybe 14 millimeters, something like that on travel. <clears throat> uh, what we're going to do though, uh, here's, you know, just a quick shot of it with the shocks on something here. And, uh, you know, I don't know, they're shocks, they got oil in them. So what we're going to do though, is we're going to show you how to put these together so that they do not fall apart later. And uh, what you first want to do is just go ahead and open up the baggie. If you're starting this at home, uh, things you will need. You might need some tape. You might need a pair of pliers. You will need either some super glue or some Loctite. I'm going to go ahead and open up this tube of super glue since I could not find my Loctite. Uh, you will also need paper towels. This is rubbing alcohol even though it doesn't say anything on the bottle. That is rubbing alcohol. Inside the bag, you will have four shocks, just like so. You will have another baggie with a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Really overstuffed bag full of stuff. So, uh, there's some O-rings in here. There's some little brass shock balls. Uh, there is some springs, a lot of different springs. And uh, they're all going to be stuck together, probably. So, you know, take a moment to unstick the springs from themselves. And just kind of set them to the side in their perspective locations or something. Okay, we'll probably, I'm not going to take all these apart, but there's a set of silver springs. There's a set of black springs. There's a set of gold springs. And there's another set of black springs. The uh, the two different sets of black springs are going to be uh, like a long travel black spring and a short travel black spring for people who want to run like what would be called a droop setup. The droop setup is going to be these four little springs here. And uh, look, we've got a spare extra spring in here. All right. Bonus spring. So these little springs here would be like for your droop setup. They're not quite the full length. Um, now you could tighten the little collar all the way down to make them to where they fit or you could just leave them in there as just a shorter spring. It's going to give less pressure so your shock's going to be more, more likely to collapse <clears throat> and stay collapsed while you're driving around. You're going to have your little screws to put the shocks onto the truck. There's an Allen wrench which uh, I don't think fits anything on this actually. Maybe it fits these little screws. Let's find out. Oh, it does. Okay, so they give you an Allen wrench for these little screws. Isn't that nice of the mofo? We get an Allen wrench for the little screws. Uh, if you're like me, you've probably got about 12,000 of these laying around. Here's all the little shock balls. Just push those kind of out of the way. And there's some O-rings. They're going to push those out of the way too. So I really, whenever I put these shocks together, when I put any shock together, I don't use all of the O-rings. Um, there's going to be on one end of this ball a, uh, let me see if I can maybe get that a little closer. On one end of the ball, if you guys can see that, there is a bigger end. And on the other end, there is a smaller end. Uh, what I like to do whenever I put these on, I'll drop it in there, like so, to where it doesn't fall out that direction. Put my finger on the back side of it and I'll take one of these little o-rings and just wedge it on there like so and uh, that will retain the ball so the ball doesn't fall out it's also going to give you the maximum amount of uh, uh, what would you call it uh, directional travel when your things are moving up and down they don't just go straight up and down they kind of tend to go back and forth and side to side and so that just having the one o-ring on there is going to allow your shock to move a little bit well, it's going up and down and in and out without binding. So that's how I install 
my shock balls. I'll go ahead and stick one more in here real quick. Now, when you're putting on the shock balls, uh, <clears throat> be very careful not to smash your spring. So I'm going to pull my spring out of the way, then put my finger on the bottom of that ball and just shove it on with my thumb. Like so. Now here comes the important parts with these shocks. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this. It's very lightly installed. It's barely even on there. That's going to allow you to take the spring off. And uh, so you can choose which spring you're going to want to run later. Next, I am going to unscrew this top cap here. Just do that by finger as well. Now, the reason I have this blue tape here, which uh, you may or may not need, if your shock is really, really hard to get, let's say you can't unscrew that little bottom collar retainer there, you could put some tape on this shock shaft here, like so. Just give it a little rep. Then you can squeeze that shaft with pliers without having to worry about damaging the shock shaft. Because if you damage the shock shaft, when you go to compress the shock, whenever you go to compress the shock, if this shock shaft is damaged, it's going to cut the O-rings inside here. And then you're going to have a leaky shock. So, uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do next, now that I've got this little bottom spring retaining collar off, the shock perch, whatever you want to call it, and I've got the top cap off, there's no oil in these shocks, they come empty. Uh, there will be some residue probably on them. I'm going to go ahead and very slowly just push this out like so. And then you'll have the shaft and the little brass piston. Now what you want to do with this little brass piston and shaft, you're going to want to unscrew the piston. Take that right off of there like so. And you're just going to douse it with a little bit of alcohol. And you're going to wipe the oil residue off of your shock shaft and your piston. Try to get that as clean as you can. Try to get all the oil residue off of it. Same thing with the little piston. And you can kind of just blow through that without blowing it away though. Try to get that dried out a little bit. <clears throat> now if you don't remember, when you're looking at this shaft, the shock piston came off of the shorter end of the threaded shaft. There's two threaded shaft ends. The shorter end is where that piston came from. What I'm going to go ahead and do, very carefully here without making a giant mess, I'm going to squeeze out just a little bit of super glue. You know what, let's put something underneath that first. So I can find my super glue. These tubes always come with almost nothing in them. Oh, there's some. I'm gonna roll that threaded part in the super glue just a little bit and then I'm going to put this little piston back onto the shaft hopefully let's try it the other way there we go now I'm just going to go ahead and snug that as good as I can I might even put this tape on here real quick grab it with the pliers like so give it a good snug and then you can kind of set that off to the side and you know maybe start working on the other one while that kind of dries. Be sure to, uh, while you've got this out and you've got your rag handy, once you got that installed, kind of give it a little wipe down. Try not to try to make sure you don't have a lot of residue everywhere. You don't want that residue on the shock shaft. Just where the piston is. Okay. Now we're going to pretend, oh, I just stuck my finger in super glue. Ugh. Step three, move that out of the way. All right. So we're going to take this little shaft here now. Uh, and you want to be careful. There is tiny O-rings inside this hole. When you're taking the shaft out, putting the shaft back in, you want to make sure you don't lose those little O-rings. So we are going to go ahead and put this back into that hole. And uh, uh, you can feel free to... Um, Let's see, just kind of go in here like so, real nice and gently. Just wiggle it around a little bit until it pops right through there, like so. And you'll feel the O-ring tension in there, you know, when it's installed properly. Now we have this little bottom cup here. Uh, we got our top cap over here. There's an O-ring in that top cap as well. You probably can't see it on camera. 
there's an o-ring inside there as well um, on this one I'm going to go ahead and use the gold springs because my truck is a little heavier than some others the black springs would be the lightest spring silver would be the strongest gold would be the kind of medium spring I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier with the piston but this time on the very bottom for the spring perch and I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of super glue on that shaft and then kind of finger tighten that on on the little shock perch and you can I don't know set it to the side let it dry keep working on another one or you can do whatever you're going to do with this one and keep going but the final step is going to be adding oil to your oil shock and uh, I'm going to just pull this little sp adjustable spring collar down a little bit so I can make sure to get this on all the way without hitting that first now I'm going to go find some shock oil I've got two different weights of shock oil here I have a 37 and I have a 17 these are kind of both ends of the spectrum uh, depending on if you want like a lighter oil or a heavier oil I'm going to go with the lighter oil in these shocks I'm going to use this 17 and a half right here and uh, I haven't actually tried using this lighter oil in these shocks yet so we'll see how it works now these are uh, the little piston in there is very close to the actual shock body so if you put too heavy of a shock oil inside this it's not going to work very well at all so I'm going to use a pretty lightweight oil what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> kind of push this up a little just compress it just a little bit put a drop in there maybe two then I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to kind of work it towards the bottom down here and you'll hear it making some kind of squishy noises and that's going to suck the oil down below the piston now I'm going to add maybe another drop or two it doesn't take much these don't hold a whole lot and if you put too much in there your shock will not compress all the way <clears throat> so right now I'm looking at this you probably can't see it but when I get the shock about four millimeters from the top the oil is right there getting ready to push out of the top so that's about where I'm going to want it let me go ahead and put my cap back on and you don't need to tighten this cap a lot just make sure it's on there put my collar back up and now I have a assembled oil shock <clears throat> and these will uh, these will dampen your rig pretty good when you're driving it's not going to be as bouncy um, the other things you can do you can try thicker oils uh, if you push it in all the way and it doesn't go you know about where it's supposed to stop at if it doesn't compress all the way you may have too much oil in there in which case you can loosen this little top cap push it up all the way and then kind of snug it back down again and it's going to leak a little bit of oil out of the top when you do that but uh make sure you don't get super glue or <clears throat> you know if you're smart you're probably using thread locker and not super glue make sure you don't get thread locker or super glue all over the shaft or anything on that shaft that's going to cause it to not move freely here that's going to be probably the most important thing also don't damage the shock shaft with pliers like I was telling you earlier make sure you put a little tape on there first something so you can just lightly grab that shaft and uh, it's not going to mar the shock shaft because if you mar the shock shaft you're going to cut the o-rings you're going to hate yourself well I hope you found this video informative and useful and uh, good luck on the trails. Enjoy and have a great day.